Hello! My name is Miles Pitwell, I'm a professional magician, and since I spent time on social media channels, I have noticed some very important things that are still being done wrong by many magicians out there. That's why I created this format to share tips and experiences to make your tricks and videos even better. Welcome to The Professor Talks. Hello, it's me again, your professor. I don't know about you, but I think it's great that I'm doing my videos in English now. Somehow, I really like it. I hope you feel the same way, if not, I don't care. Today, I have prepared a very special video for you, because there is one thing I'm getting asked over and over again. I'm talking about smoke gimmicks. Smoke gimmicks are such a science in themselves. A few years ago, when there were no vaporizers on the market, it was a huge hassle. There were only low-quality e-cigarettes that were connected to a kind of blow bar that you had to press to produce a small puff of smoke. Today, the whole thing works electronically, is much more powerful and the amount of smoke can be controlled. Depending on the manufacturer, the devices are about the size of a pack of playing cards. Over the last years, many different magicians and producers have put all kinds of smoke gimmicks on the market, and each has its advantages and disadvantages. Some are bigger and more powerful, others are so small that you can fit them easily in a matchbox, and still others are so cleverly designed that you can even wear them in a normal life situation. And this is exactly the point where I have to make a brief intervention. Because I have tried out many, many, many smoking gimmicks over the years. And by that, I don't just mean at home for me, but life and intensively. What do I mean by intensive? By that I mean daily use over many months. And if there is one thing I have learned, is that smoke gimmicks are not made for normal life situations. Very sensitive electronics are built into them and these electronics have to be looked after. The vibrations and air and temperature changes of our everyday life are not good for such sensitive electronics. There are supposed to be smoke gimmicks that can be worn totally inconspicuously and are cleverly camouflaged. However, as soon as you unpack the product, you can see that there is a huge difference between, for example, a normal watch and a prepared one. But well, that's up to you. It would bother me if I wore one of those things on my wrist. You know what I'm talking about. Of course, I also stay in contact with professional colleagues who have smoke gimmicks that were of no interest to me because I'm very demanding and also suspicious when it comes to such products. And in the end, my fears were all confirmed. I'm not going to name names here, because it's not about bad-mouthing certain manufacturers, but about advising you what my experiences are and which smoke gimmicks are the best in my opinion. But some products on the market make my hair stand up. What rubbish has been produced? And that from professional magicians. Sorry, but that just had to be said. From professional to professional. And the worst problem of all is that the smoke gimmicks don't produce the promised amount of smoke. In the trailers you always see a gigantic amount of smoke and at home all you get is a little fart cloud. The second problem is the power. It's obvious that the smaller the device, 
the smaller the components. And there has to be a battery somewhere. And the smaller the battery, the faster you run out of juice. And of course, such a small battery can only produce a certain amount of smoke. That's clear, isn't it? I mean, have you ever tried to light up a light bulb with one of these? Exactly. The third problem is spare parts. There are no spare parts for most products. So if, for example, the heating coil, the part that vaporizes the liquid, burns out, your gimmick is broken. Another problem is that some gimmicks don't have a battery indicator, so you don't know exactly how much power is left and when it's empty. And there are even still gimmicks that come onto the market without a remote control, so people, come on! In my opinion, that's an absolute no-go. Most smoke gimmicks, however, just stop working at some point. So, they're unreliable. The last point is the price. Unfortunately, smoke gimmicks are very often very expensive. We are talking about prices between 160 and 650 euros. And with electronic devices, a low price always means low quality. It could be a small amount of smoke, the durability or the workmanship. There is always a catch somewhere. Of course, it depends on the purpose for which you want to use a smoke gimmick. It could be that you want your smoke effect very small and discreet, but then the audience has to look very closely. And if you want to do a bigger effect at some point, you are limited in your possibilities. But if you buy a good gimmick, it can be used in many different ways, and you can be sure that it always works reliably. So, which smoke gimmick do I recommend now? Due to the above mentioned reasons, I recommend only one smoke gimmick, and that is Smoke One Grande 2.0 by Lucas Lee. This is the only gimmick that keeps its promise and has never disappointed me for many years. Of course, this device has also a proud price of $400, but it's worth it. Everything else is rubbish. Or maybe there is an electronic freak among you who builds his own gimmick. But I say, don't underestimate it. You will reach your limits in terms of size, finesse and cleanliness. I know what I'm talking about. There is only one smoke gimmick that surpasses the Smoke One Grande, in my opinion. And that is this one. But it is also much bigger and therefore impractical for many of you and unfortunately it is no longer produced. So that's done with anyway. And here are a few last tips if you should decide to buy a smoke gimmick. The rules and tips apply to all smoke gimmicks. First, charge the battery at least every three months even if you're only storing it. This is because the device contains so-called LiPo batteries. They are very powerful, but they can become deeply discharged and the battery is then broken. Second, if you know something about it, you can try to build a plug connection between the battery and the motherboard. This allows you to change the battery yourself very easily. Third, if you install a new battery yourself, pay attention to the MAH specifications. I don't know enough about this myself to be able to advise you further, but I know that this information is important for the performance. Fourth, always keep the cotton on the heating coil moist. The cotton wool should not dripping, but it should always be well wetted with liquid. So, 
that's it. If you still have any questions, please let me know in the comments or write me directly on Instagram. I'm happy to help with advice as much as I can. Otherwise, have a great day. See you in the next episode of The Professor Talks.